This program is brought to you through Full Gospel Evangelism, a ministry that was founded and led by Bishop David McKivett. We believe Jesus is still healing, saving, and working miracles today. To contact us, write or to us at Full Gospel Evangelism, 81 Valentin Road, E17 3JJ. You can also telephone us or send us a text on plus 447-786-90931 or plus 440-2085-2051-49. Join our Facebook group Bishop McKevitt Ministries, follow Bishop McKevitt on YouTube, support us with an online donation. Our details are Full Gospel Evangelism account number 9906-2135. Short code 60, 22, 23. Thank you, God bless you. This is part two of Judge Christian Judge. So I'm going to continue where I left off, but I may go over some of the things I've said. Because one of the things I learned when I was teaching adult education was you cannot teach something once and expect people to get it. You know, you don't, you have to keep going over it and over it and over it for people to get it. You don't learn a language by hearing, a, by hearing someone say it once. You didn't learn to do maths by hearing it once. Sometimes you've got to go over and over and over it and in order to get it. And whether it's myself or any other teaching, whether it's Addy Bowler teaching or anyone else, remember that it took them hours and months to get what they got now. And you're not going to get it all in one message. You need to listen to the message and go over the message over and over again, make notes and learn. So on this subject, I'm going to deal with a scripture everybody uses when it comes to judging. Everybody uses this scripture. And it's Matthew 7, 1 and 2. Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, ye shall be judged. And what measure you meet, ye shall be measured to you again. That scripture is quoted over and over again when it comes to judgment. And oftentimes they are ignoring the context of what is being said. Now, some hold, and can I just say godly people, I'm not criticizing, some godly people hold that we should not judge for any reason. No matter what it is, we should not judge for any reason, no matter what the situation is, it's totally wrong to judge. That is the view of some people. The problem is then, if you don't judge your child's behavior to be wrong, how would you correct it? How do you reward good behavior if you, if, unless you judge it to be right? How do you do that? If, if, a, if a Christian should judge at no, at no time at all, then forget about studying law because there, there are Christians that I know that are in law and they are judges. I've got a good friend of mine. She is a Christian. She's a barrister. And I've got another one who is a judge in a court. If it's wrong to judge, they shouldn't hold that position, should they? Um, you shouldn't be on jury service because you're going to make a judgment. And uh, there's a lot of things in the Bible that we are told to do that it's not possible to do it unless we can dis unless we can judge what is right or wrong based on Scripture. Now, but some hold that that no way should Christian judge for any reasons. Others people declare that judging in certain situation is right, which you can probably guess is the situation that I hold in certain situation. But no one, nobody teaches that we should judge indiscriminately. I don't believe that we should walk into church and, and judge every single thing, every single behavior, because that is not judging. That's becoming judgmental. And we should never, ever do that. That kind of judging hurts people, it upsets people, and it causes people to leave the church. There is a right way to judge and there is a wrong way to judge. Now, those that believe that we shouldn't judge anybody, they use scripture. And those that believe that it's okay to judge in certain situations, they use scripture as well. Both use scripture. And we need to look at those scriptures because one of the things is, friends, you cannot build a doctrine up on one verse of scripture. You've got to take everything the Bible says about that particular teaching and then the right doctrine will unite the scriptures you can't put a trinity from one verse of scripture 
And any doctrine, you've got to take the whole of the Bible, not just one verse of scripture. And where there is a right doctrine, it unites the scripture. So if you, if you get two scriptures saying two different things, you look to see how they are united. You don't just say, well, I'm going to obey this one, forget that one. Or you don't just you don't just twist the scriptures to fit in to your preconceived ideas. You don't do that. That's not the way to approach scripture, to twist everything to fit into your ideas of what you've already planned. You know, I was in the other room a little while ago and they talked about truth. You know, most people have already made up their mind and they don't want the truth. They want, they want, they want to hear what they've always believed. So if someone comes to and says, says something different to what their church believes, they don't judge it by the word of God. They judge it by what they've always taught and what they've always believed. But we need to get a hold of truth. The Bible says, buy the truth and sell it not. Do everything you can to get it. And don't sell it to please your denomination. Don't sell it to please your friends. Buy the truth and sell it not. And that should be our approach to scripture. So I'm going to use the scripture now that those that believe that we should never, ever judge for any situation, they use scripture. What are the scriptures that they use? Number one, the one that we refer to, where it says, judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you, you shall be judged. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. Matthew 7, 1 and 2. Another scripture that people that say we shouldn't judge at all, at all is Romans 14, verse 13. Romans 14, 13. It says, therefore, let us not judge one another anymore, but rather resolve this, not put a stumbling block or cause the fault of our, in our brother's way. Romans 14, verse 10. But why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt to your brother? For ye shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And then Romans 2, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, you are excusable, O man. Whoever you, shall, whoever you are, judge, and whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same thing. But we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. Now, if you take those scriptures alone, you're going to come to the conclusion that it's wrong on any grounds to judge. If you just take those scriptures. The only problem is they are not the only scriptures that deal with the problem. And we've got to take a look. We've got to practice what we call, there's a subject in Bible, and I teach in Bible college called, um, hermeneutics, called hermeneutics. And I haven't got time to go into it, but there's a right way to interpret the scripture. And there's a wrong way to interpret the scripture. And if you just draw attention to them, you're going to um, draw the attention that it's wrong to judge on any account. Well, we're going to take a look at those scriptures later on. But those of us that believe, and I clock myself here, that believe that judgment is right in certain situations, we also use scripture. What scriptures do we use? And I want to say that the view that I, the view that I hold is in line with the majority of scholars. If you've got to get Bible commentaries and you read the Bible commentaries, the view that I'm holding is in line with most of the Bible commentaries. Not all. Because Bible commentaries are written by humans. People that write Bible commentaries are not infallible. But we can learn from them. The Bible is infallible. The Bible is the only thing that's infallible. Not the creeds, not the confessions, not the commentaries. Only the Bible is infallible. So those of us that believe it's right to judge in, so, in some situations, not walking around judging every single thing, not putting yourself as God, judging every little motive, but in certain situations, there are certain things. In Luke 7, 41 to 43. Luke 7, 41 to 43. I'm revising what I said last week. There are certain critics. Jesus spoke a parable to prove a point. He said there were certain creditors which had two debtors. One hold 500 pence and another 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them. He said, tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that to him who he forgave most. Now, look what Jesus said in response to this. 
This was the same Jesus who said, Thou shalt not judge. But look what Jesus said. I read Luke, I read the whole of Luke 7.43. It's Simon answered and said, I suppose that he whom he forgave most, and he, that's Jesus, said unto him, Thou hast judged rightly. Thou hast judged rightly. So there is a right way to judge Jesus. That's not Pastor McKibbitt's words. That's what Jesus said. The same Jesus that has previously said, Thou shalt not judge. He said, You shall judge rightly. And then in John 7, 24, John 7, 24, Jesus said, judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Hey, Jesus is saying judge righteous, judge righteous judgment. So was Jesus contradicting what he said in Matthew chapter 7? No, he was not. We have to take a look at what Jesus was dealing with in order to get that understanding. This is good hermeneutics. We need to take a look at what Jesus said. I'm going to get back to that. But look what Jesus said. Judge not according to his appearance, but judge righteously. We remember that when I, when I read that, I remembered about Samuel in the Old Testament, where God appointed, uh, said to Samuel, go and appoint one of the sons of Jesse to be king. And he saw the first son, he looked at Elab, he looked at his appearance, and he said, surely. He was making a judgment based on appearance. The very thing that Jesus said, judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. And in 1 Samuel 16, verse 6 and 7. 1 Samuel 16, verse 6 and 7. I'm saying it twice so you can write it down. So it was that when they came then, he looked at Helev and said, surely the Lord's appointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance. The very thing that Jesus taught us, do not look on his appearance or his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord judges the heart. Now, also, in the Bible, we are told to judge. In Proverbs 31, verse 9. Proverbs 31, verse 9. It says, open thy mouth, judge righteously. It doesn't say don't judge. It says judge righteously. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and please the cause of the poor and the needy. And then in 1 Corinthians 2.15, some people say, Pastor McKibbin is not spiritual. For a Christian to judge, really. Look what it says in 1 Corinthians 2.15. 1 Corinthians 2.15. But he who is spiritual judges all things. Eh? It's spiritual. The right kind of judgment. The right kind of judgment. Righteous judgment. It says, but he who is spiritual. In other words, not the man or the woman that is walking around the church in flesh criticizing everybody and judging everybody. That is the wrong kind of judgment and it le and it causes problems in the church. But it says judging who is spiritual, who is led by the Holy Spirit, who is spiritual, judge of all things. Yet he himself is rightly judged by no man. And let, let me read that from the Amplified Bible because it makes it clear to me. The Amplified Bible, uh, 1 Corinthians 2.15. But the spiritual man, the spiritual, mature Christian. Those that go around criticizing, condemning everybody. Oh, look at the way they're dressed. Look at their hairstyle. Look at the way they're doing that. That is not righteous judgment. Righteous judgment is done in love under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, led by God, not the flesh. It says, but the spiritual man, the spiritual, mature Christian, this is what the Amplified Bible says, judges all things, questions, examine and applies what the Holy Spirit reveals. No, he says, he says, what the Holy Spirit reveals. Yet he himself will judge by no man. The unbeliever cannot, be, cannot judge and understand the believer's spiritual nature. So this is the right kind of judgment when we are led by the Holy Spirit and we do it in love under the night of the Holy Ghost, not just judging everybody because, oh, look at, look at the way she dresses, look at the way she wears. And sometimes we make that kind of judgment according to the flesh. 
a pastor make kid, a pastor make kid walks down the street with a nice suit on the bowler and a and a tie on and everything. He looks good. Everybody will feel safe. And yet you get some maybe a black man walking around with Mustafarian air style, looking rough. They're going to judge him to be bad. They judge you according to your appearance. And that that man could be better than the other man. This is wrong kind of judgment. And we should never judge that way. We should judge righteous judgment according to the feet. So, so we see then that there are scriptures that tell us not to judge. And there are scriptures that tell us to judge righteously. And it says, and as I said, it says Second Corinthians 15, but he who is spiritual judgeth all things. Now, I didn't put that in the Bible. God put it in. It's the, it's the inspired, inerrant, infallible word of God. So we need to, but we, it's not a question of choosing this scripture. I'm going to obey that script, this scripture and not that scripture. As I said, the right understanding of the Bible unites the scripture. It doesn't ignore scripture. It doesn't explain away one verse so it fits in with what you believe. It takes each verse at face value and it unites them. The true unity, the true, the truth comes out when all the scriptures unite together. And they all say the same thing. This is the way to understand the Bible. Because the Bible doesn't contradict itself. Jesus didn't contradict himself when he said, judge not, you be not judged. And then, and then said, judge righteously later on in the scripture. He wasn't, he wasn't contradicting himself, but he was applying a truth that you and I need to understand. So we need to take a look at the scriptures. So we've already said, judge not that you be not judged. Is he Jesus speaking? For in what judgment you judge and what measure will be measured back to you? Now, it doesn't stop there. It explains it in the next verse. When it says verse three, and why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye and do not consider the plank in your own eye? Ah, therefore, it's ungodly judgment. Because you've got this, you've got something wrong with your life, but you're criticizing everybody else. Probably doing the same thing that person's doing. This is wrong judgment. But look what he says. And how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your your eye and look at the plank in your own eye? You remove, you've got to get yourself right, and then you're in a condition. You you know, there are lots of preachers that stand up and preach against adultery while they are living in adultery. It's hypocritical. And it's foolishness. And you go around correcting your brother. I knew a I knew a bishop in London that used to he, he, he everybody in the church that he thought was doing wrong. He would rebuke them in the church, make them stand up, and he, and, be, and and insult them in front of the whole congregation. And that same bishop was found out that he'd been sleeping with the choir leader, even though he was a married man for, for eight years. This is hypocritical judgment that is condemned. So let me read Matthew 7, verses 1 and 2 from the Amplified Bible. And the Amplified Bible is saying exactly what I'm saying now. The Amplified Bible. Um, Matthew 7, verse 1. Do not judge and criticize and condemn others unfairly with an attitude of self-righteous superiority as, as through assuming the office of a judge. It's talking about self-righteous. Don't judge self-righteously. Don't judge hypocritically. That's what he's talking about. I'll read that again. Do not judge and criticize and condemn others unfairly through an attitude of self-righteous superiority as for assuming the office of a judge so that you will not judge unfairly. For as you judge hypocritically judge others when you are sinful and unrepentant, you will be judged in accordance to the standard that you have measured. It's talking about hypocritical judgment. When it says judge not, the context of the chapter, don't ignore context in chapter. And when, when Pastor McKibbitt is preaching and he uses a scripture, go on, look at that scripture and read the chapter and make sure that I'm saying it in context and any preacher that is preaching says it in context. Now, what about Romans chapter 2? It says, therefore, ex therefore excuse me, O oh man, Whatsoever you judge, for whatsoever you judge another, you condemn yourself. Again, this is talking about hypocritical judgment. The book of Romans, you have to take things in context. There were legalistic Jews that had come down 
and they were trying to get people back into the under the law, getting away from grace and getting them back to the law, the legalistic law. And that is why Paul went on to say later on in the scripture, he said, you that, you that say you should not commit, should, should not steal, do you steal? He says that in the same book of Romans chapter 2. Again, he's talking about hypocritical judgment. And this, and we see a lot of hypocritical judgment in in the church today, that the people that are living wrong always always seem to criticize other people. This is this is wrong and it goes against the standard of the Bible. But righteous stuff, righteous judgment, where we are led by the Holy Spirit, where we are submitted unto God, is godly judgment, which the Bible says. I, I read it again, but he who is spiritual judge of all things. And Jesus, and Jesus said, judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. The Bible doesn't condemn, the Bible doesn't contradict itself. So one time he's talking about hypocritical judgment, and he said, You should not judge hypocritically. You don't judge according to the outward appearance. You don't judge self-righteously. You've got no right to walk it. And I see that a lot in the church, people judging each other. Oh, she shouldn't be wearing this. People judge women because they've got earrings, they've got lipstick, they've got makeup. And they say, they're not a Christian. They're not a Christian. They're not a Christian. And we make judgments according to the flesh. And this is, I was raised up in a very strict Pentecostal church. I was saved in a very strict Pentecostal church. Man, if a woman came in wearing lipstick, the preacher would stand up and call her a Jezebel. And preach about Jezebel. This is fleshly judgment. It's not judgment based on the spirit. You see, when you judge righteously, you'll always do things the right way. So suppose your um, sister is doing something wrong. Now, if, you know, friends, do you correct your child's behavior? When your child is wrong, do you correct their behavior? But if you can't judge, then you can't say they're wrong. If you can't judge, you can't say I'm wrong. Because the moment you say someone's wrong, you've made a judgment. The question is, are you judging according to God's standards? So, so when you judge righteously, you judge by the word of God. So if when Paul said, no adulterer, no fornicator can enter the kingdom of God, if that had been some preacher today, they would have said, Paul, you're being, ju you're ju being judgmental, you're judging. No, he was accepting God's standard. And when we judge according to God's standard, we say something's wrong based on because God said it's wrong. In other words, I'm going in line with God's judgment. So when someone says to me, past, when someone says to me, I want to be a bishop, but I'm married to I'm, ma I'm married to three women, and I say you can't be a bishop, and you might say I'm judgmental. No, I accepted God's judgment on the matter, and I'm enforcing God's judgment on the matter. Therefore, I'm judging righteously because I'm judging according to God's standard. Not my standard. And there is a right way. Because if you can't judge anybody, you can never enforce discipline. The Apostle Paul did. When he wrote to the Corinthians, he said, hand over that man to the, to the devil for the suffering of, for the flesh. He made a judgment. And yet even, even Paul, even Paul, Paul wrote, he said in 1 Corinthians 14, 29, talking about prophecy in the church. He said, let there be two or three prophets and let the others judge. So there is a right way to judge and there is a right way, but a wrong, there is a wrong way to judge. And too many times in our churches, we don't, we, we judge and we drive people away. We condemn people, ungodly judgment. And then, but then we go to the other extreme where we say, I'm not going to judge anybody. I'm not going to judge anybody. I'm not going to judge nothing at all. And therefore, every, everything and anything is allowed in the church. Ungodly music. People dress any way they like. People coming to church with their second wife and third wife because we don't want to make judgment. We put homosexuals behind the pulpit because we mustn't judge them. You see, friends, one, there's two dangers going to the extreme of fleshly judgment. And and then not judging at all. If Pastor McKibbit is if you say Pastor McKibbit is wrong, you've made a judgment. And you might be right, but you need to deal with that in a godly way. But when someone judges somebody in a godly way, the righteous way, they try to restore that one.
They don't go around gossiping, backbiting and slandering. I mean, the Bible says, if a brother be overtaken with a fault, you which are spiritual, restore such a one. Well, first of all, you've got to identify that he's got a fault. You've got to judge that he's got a fault. And then you go around trying to restore that person. If he doesn't listen to you, you get two or three others to come with you and you talk to that person. This is the right way. When it's righteous judgment, it's done in love. It doesn't compromise the word of God. It stands on the word of God and it accepts God's judgment in that situation. Let's go move on a bit. So the question is, how can we judge righteous judgment? How can we judge righteous judgment? Well, righteous judgment, when we judge righteously, we don't judge according to the flesh. Something is not wrong because Pastor McKibbitt's wrong. I'm not, I'm not trying to judge you because I've had an argument with you. I'm upset with you. I'm not trying to bring you down. Righteous judgment is when we walk in the spirit and we let the Holy Spirit walk through us. And we handle it, we handle it in love and we go by the word of God. Something is wrong, not because Pastor McKinley says it's wrong, not because the Pentecostal church says it's wrong, not because the denomination says it's wrong, but because God says it's wrong. And therefore, I'm going in line with God's judgment. And it is done the right way. It should always be done to restore such a one. Let me read Galatians chapter 6. Reverend, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, Restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. This is the right way. But first of all, if it be overtaken, the King, the King James, the King James Version says, if a man be overtaken by fault. Well, first of all, you've got to identify that fault. And therefore, you've made a judgment that, that, that that's a fault according to the word of God. But because you are spiritual, you're exercising righteous judgment. You're trying to restore that person and help them back. In fact, if I read that from the Amplified Bible, the Amplified Bible of Galatians 6 verse 1 says, Brethren, if any man be caught in any sin, you who are spiritual, that is you who are responsive to the guidance of the spirit. Now, I like this. I like what the Amplified Bible says. Let me read that again. Brothers, if anyone is caught in sin, you who are spiritual, that is, you who are responsive to the guidance of the spirit, are to restore such a person in spirit and in gentleness. Not judgmental, not chemical, in gentleness. Not in the sense of superiority or righteousness. Keeping a watchful eye on yourself so that you are not tempted as well that's what the amplified bible said in galatians chapter six this to me is the right kind of judgment when we are led by the holy spirit sensitive to the leading of god at the right place with god and then i can help then i can help i, I can help you this is the right this is what the bible not what pastor mckivitt says but what the bible calls righteous judgment and you make judgments all the time Every one of you, you judge, make you make judgments. But the question is, are you judging righteously or are you judging wrong? Is your judgment in line with the word of God? Ungodly, self-righteous, hypocritical judgment is condemned in the Bible. But righteous judgment, where we are led by the spirit, where we are speaking, as God says, in line with the word of God, and that is righteous judgment. If someone comes to me and says to me, Pastor McKibbitt, I'm living in adultery. I want you to ordain me. If I say no, well, you're judging that person. Yes, I am. According to the word of God. No adulterer, no fornicator shall enter the kingdom of God. I've got a right to stand up and say, I'm not going to ordain you in that situation. Because God says it, not Pastor McKibbitt. Not Bishop McKibbitt, I can't get my, can't get my title right. Not B Bishop McKibbitt, he said it. It's God that says it. And this is... I'm going to stop there and I'm going to have time for any feedback or contributions. Bye.